let's talk what's new in SOLIDWORKS CAM 2019. In our Flying Saucer video, we alluded to the fact that SOLIDWORKS is releasing a new product geared towards machinists and CNC programmers. That product is called SOLIDWORKS Machinist. SOLIDWORKS Machinist is a version of SOLIDWORKS that includes all of the CAM capabilities found in SOLIDWORKS CAM, Standard or Professional, and some limited SOLIDWORKS capabilities. This is geared towards users whose primary use in SOLIDWORKS is for CNC programming and CAM, but still needs to be able to create geometries such as vices and work holding and other types of fixtures, but they don't necessarily need to create 2D drawings. SOLIDWORKS Machinist is available in two tiers. Machinist Standard is going to allow users to work in part mode inside SOLIDWORKS and use CAM Standard. Machinist Professional will allow users to work in SOLIDWORKS parts or assemblies and comes with all of the features of CAM Professional. There are no 2D drawing capabilities within this product, but as you're going to see in a few moments here, we're becoming more and more capable of using the 3D model to identify and communicate tolerance data. So what's new in the actual SOLIDWORKS CAM tool for this 2019 release? Going back to just what I said, there have been some improvements to tolerance-based machining or TBM. TBM now supports turning, so we're going to be able to have strategies selected for us automatically, both in milling and turning now. We're gonna have improved gd &T support and a new feature called Move is, in my opinion, one of the best things about this 2019 release. When we're doing our CAM programming in an integrated tool and we're working directly on the 3D model, a difficulty that's arisen in the past is what do we do when, because of tolerances, we need to machine a feature that is not in the exact same position as it's drawn. Now, engineers and designers tend to draw their features in the nominal position, but then they'll assign asymmetric tolerances or GD and T tolerances that allow us to, as a machinist, kind of move the feature around so that we give ourselves the best chance for creating a part that complies with the stated tolerances. Machinists and programmers don't always have right access to these geometries and we really don't want them moving the features in the CAD model. So this has been a situation that's hard to reconcile and being able to move the virtual feature now gets us past that hump. There have been some improvements to volume mill Namely, we now have rest machining available to us. Rest machining is going to look at the work in progress and only target areas of the model that still contain material to cut. So this is going to be great for users who have a workflow that involves a rough pass and then a semi-rough with rest machining. We have new feed rate overrides for corners and arcs. We're going to be able to read in more tool geometries. Another great thing that I think is uh, going to help with the user experience and the usefulness of automatic feature recognition is we now have the ability to assign different default strategies for different machine tools. And then lastly here, we have some improved control over whole end conditions. So let's jump into the software and cover each one of these. So if you remember from our Flying Saucer video, I had a 100,000 Ripham shaft that I needed to machine. This is a perfect example for us to talk about TBM within the turning module. In this shaft, we have three MBD dimensions that have tolerance data. Two of them have symmetric tolerances of plus or minus five thousandths, giving a total tolerance window of 10 thousandths and one of the dimensions has an asymmetric tolerance window of plus zero minus 1000. It's a much tighter tolerance window. And as a programmer or a machinist, I'm looking at these tolerances and developing strategies on how I'm going to cut them to give me the best chance for creating a part that's going to pass inspection. I have to treat them separately and the data is there for me. So why not allow SOLIDWORKS CAM to use that data to suggest a machining suggestion, and that's exactly what's going to happen. 
using the tolerance-based machining, we're going to be able to create and customize and automate strategies based on tolerance windows. So the features that are in this shaft right now are going to come up as rectangular OD grooves. So if I highlight that option, I'm going to see the different tolerance windows and different strategies assigned to each tolerance window. So for example, the tolerance window highlighted is a total of two thousands. If a feature is found with the tolerance data that fits within that window, it's going to select the strategy rough 2x finish bearing. That's a custom strategy that I've made and I've named. So it means something to me, maybe not necessarily to somebody else. If the tolerance windows are above that, it's simply going to choose a rough finish strategy. So we're going to run extract machinable features. The feature recognition is going to identify machinable features on this shaft. In this case, they will all be turn features because we are in a lathe machine. And if we look at the feature tree, we can see our rectangular grooves, the back one with a rough finish strategy, the middle one with a rough finish strategy, and then this front one with a rough 2x finish bearing strategy. That's TBM in action. If you've been watching our videos or if you're familiar with SOLIDWORKS CAM, you'll know that the use of custom strategies and the automation of those strategies being selected by the software based on parameters of the feature is one of the best things about SOLIDWORKS CAM. It really allows the tool to work for you and it speeds up the process of programming. Now let's talk about some milling enhancements. I'm going to create a new cam configuration. And in this configuration, I'm going to keep my default machine, which is set up as a Tormach 770M. Here in Salt Lake City, we brought in a Tormach 770M into our lab a couple months ago, and it's been a great tool for us. And we are slowly starting to customize our TechDB to fit for that Tormach 770M. I also have an area of my TechDB set up for my home machine, a little bit larger Lagoon Matic machine. And we're gonna talk about some of the new enhancements in 2019 that makes it easier for me as a user who's programming for multiple machines to still make use of the automation. But first, let's run feature recognition on this part. And let's take a look at some of these pockets here. So these pockets were found with a rough and a finish. Each of the pockets have a rough and a finish. Let's click into one of these rough operations. So first off here in the tool tab, we have a new look and a new section called the non-cutting portion. And under this section, we can select if our shank is straight tapered or necked. So we now have the ability to read in more complex default tool shapes, which is going to allow us to make sure that our simulations are more accurate if we are using these types of tools. Tapered or necked shank tools are common for you know, situations where we are worried about clearance between our stock and the non-cutting portion of our tool. And in the past, we just had to know as a programmer that we're not rubbing. And here, now with the ability to read in the actual tool geometry, we're going to be able to rely on our simulation to tell us if we're rubbing or not. Heading over to the Feeds and Speeds tab, we have two new areas down here at the bottom titled Sharp Corners and Arc Feed Rate Overrides. So we now have the ability to control feed rates in corners and control feed rates in arcs right here in the user interface. Now there are different opinions and strategies out there on how to best make use of these type of feed rate overrides, but it's pretty well accepted that we do want to treat sharp corners and arcs differently than the rest of our toolpath. And having the ability to do that here now in the UI 
is going to allow us to create better parts with better surface finish and improve our tool life. So come up with a strategy that works for you, customize your tech DB and take advantage of this new feature. I may also suggest checking out the help file. You'll find a pretty thorough description of what is being overridden or controlled in each one of these boxes. Moving over to the roughing tab, we have always had the ability to use volume mill in SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional, but we, in the past, we haven't been able to use rest machining. Now I'm not gonna be able to show you the rest machining with volume mill in this video because I'm using SP0 and the rest machining for volume mill in SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional is going to be an SP1 enhancement. So it's coming, but it's not quite here yet. Let's talk about the hole and conditions. Coming back to the feature tree. Now when I right click on a hole group or a hole, I have the ability to edit and conditions. When it comes to automatic features, there's usually some refining and for holes especially, changing the end conditions was a common theme. It comes down to order of operations. Do I want to drill my holes first starting at the top of the stock and moving downward? Or do I want to machine my holes after the surfaces above them have been machined to size? That affects the end conditions. It was never very simple to adjust these after the features have been created. So this changes that. In this menu, I can change my end conditions very simply by going up to stock or up to face. I can set a blind end condition in both directions. That's a little user experience enhancement that I'm really enjoying. Now on the topic of improved user experience, let me show you the move feature. Still here in the feature window, in the right click menu, we now have the option to move features. And we're moving the virtual feature, the feature that we're actually going to cut. We're not necessarily moving the CAD and we're not changing the CAD, this is important. So for these features, I can now move them in X, Y, Z coordinates. The significance of this is that we do not have to adjust the CAD file in order to machine to the mean or machine a feature in a way that's going to give us the best ability to pass inspection. This is awesome. Every year, there's a few seemingly small enhancements that get <laughs> applause from the audience when we're going through our rollouts. And this is one of them for the SOLIDWORKS CAM tool. It's a game changer for people who are using an integrated cam tool and trying to create parts that are to spec. So let's review. I've programmed this part to be run on the Tormach in our lab here in the office. And when I ran feature recognition, these irregular pockets came in with a rough finish strategy selected. But what happens if I wanna run this at home on my machine? Let's change machines over. Let's create a new configuration and we'll change machines. Now, when we change machines, we're also changing the machine duty, which is going to give me a new set of feeds and speeds. We'll change the tool crib and the post processor automatically. And now in 2019, we're also going to get a new list of default feature strategies. So we can see here in the default strategies, window, we now have the ability to set up schemes. And I have a scheme set up for the Tormach and a scheme set up for the Lagoonmatic. The upshot here is that I can have schemes for say woodworking routers or lasers or water jets, different size mills, vertical versus horizontal, any different machine that would have different set of default strategies is going to be set up as a scheme now. If I take a look at the Tormach scheme, Irregular pockets are set up with a rough finish default strategy. In my Lagoonmatic scheme, I have the default strategy as a volume mill roughing, a rough with rest machining and a finish pass. This list is customizable here in this window or within the technology database. Under mill, 
default feature strategies. We now have the ability to copy an existing strategy, customize it, and save it. And then under the machine, we tie a machine default strategy to a default listing. So that about covers it for the what's new in SOLIDWORKS CAM 2019. This is a release that is focused on an improved user experience and fleshing out the tolerance-based machining functions. I'm excited to start using this release and I hope you are too. Thanks for joining.